okay, I'm ready for it. Are you ready for it? Next, we're gonna go ahead and start pulling off the old valve train components and of course the old timing chain set from the front of the engine. Now there is a method to the madness of pulling all these pieces off here. You don't want to just start grabbing certain pieces and pull them off because there's going to be a chance of valves meeting the piston. You want to take it off in a certain order, neutralize the cams, and then we can start pulling all the old components off pretty fast after that. All right, let's get to it. Now the very first thing I do is I come down here and I'll put rags in here. Okay, I'll lay them out across here and keep any debris from falling down into the oil pan. The oil pan is completely exposed at this point. All right, next thing, if yours are stuck on here, it's a good time to get your gaskets off of here that are stuck. Should be three of them. Okay, now before you start taking off all these timing components, what you want to do is get the crankshaft keyway at the 12 o'clock position. Now what I found works really well for this is a 32 millimeter uh, axle socket, six point, you can see on there, and it'll fit right over it, lock on to the keyway and it'll turn it just fine, no slippage, nothing, no damage. And you just keep turning it until we see it at the 12 o'clock position. You can pull it back a little bit on there. There's not much tension on these. We're just dealing with compression at this point. When you come up on a compression cycle, just wait, let it, let it bleed down. Okay, so we'll get as close as we can to 12. Well, let's see right about there, right? You kind of see it on there. Now, once that crankshaft is at the 12 o'clock position, we need to verify we're in the correct orientation between the cam and crank correlation because the crankshaft spins twice as fast as the camshafts, or you could say the crankshaft spins and these spin at half speed. Either way, there can be a difference. So what we're looking for is, there we go, these two intake lobes on cylinder one to be at about the 11 o'clock position. They're pointing up right about here with this being 12 right here. So obviously they're pointing this way, it's wrong. So at this point we need to go over to the crankshaft once again, spin it around another 360 to the 12 o'clock position again. And when we come back over here, everything should be just perfect. And that looks a little something like this. So we'll start spinning it around. Waiting for the compression. Tensioner's leaking big time. Compression stroke. Get really here at there. By the way, this is all very a lot easier if the spark plugs are out, but we all know about those spark plug issues. We're at 11, maybe 12 right there, right about there, maybe there. So now you can see the difference here position of these two about the 11 o'clock position. Okay with our timing in the correct location we can go ahead and start taking out three roller followers per head. On the passenger side you want to remove the exhaust roller follower right here from cylinder one and both intake roller followers from cylinder four right here. So be this one and this one. Now over here on the passenger side, everything is reversed. What you want on this side is to remove both intakes from cylinder five and the single exhaust from cylinder eight back there, the very last cylinder. 
Take all those out and we'll come back to the crankshaft for another spin. Now the tool you want to use is this one right here from OTC. Um, I'll put a link to it down in the description, the right part number and all that stuff. Uh, this will make your life a whole lot easier during this procedure. The way this tool works is there's a top on it here. You're going to unscrew this three pieces, okay, and put that guy to the side. The one we're going after is this one right here, number five, intake, all the rest of them are off already. And we're going to compress the valve spring down, not the roller, uh, not the lash adjuster side, just the valve spring side. So uh, this one, they're facing up nice and easy. This goes underneath here, okay, and just like that. And the legs come out the other side and sit on the cylinder head, so they have a pry point. Now at this point, you take this piece and you put it squarely on top of the valve spring. Okay, so move it around, move it around, get it onto there. And then this part right here, you're gonna spin it until you find the flat part and it comes through the flat parts on this side. It'll line up in there one way. At that point, bring it up enough to screw the uh, knob onto here and then we're going to push it fully into the camshaft make sure it's sitting over here on the head for a pry point and then we're going to readjust this once again and make sure it's square on there okay and the way it looks is something like this it's nice and square on there on top of the valve spring okay it's not hitting anything else in the head here and then we're going to well i don't know if i can even do it i'll be in the way of the camera what you're going to want to do is push down on the roller follower in the top of the valve stem with your finger and use good pressure on there. Then we're going to turn the knob and you'll see it'll push the valve spring down and compress it for us. Okay. Keep pushing down on top of the uh, roller follower. Now the reason why you push down on the roller follower as we're compressing is you want the valve spring there and the, val the, the valve stem to go down together. You don't want it separating and the spring compressing down and the valve stem stays there, keepers fall out and you lose the valve. You don't want to do that. So just like this is perfect. And at that point you can see your roller follower just falls out. And depending on where you're at, it may come this way or it may come this way. It's just, once the, the spring is fully compressed, it's just a, a little game of wiggling it out of here, pretty much. And this is where a uh, magnetic retriever really works. You'll get to one side where it's loose, and like that, it might be a little hard to get in there, so you use a retriever at that point. And there you go. Make sure you keep all your roller followers together. This is from cylinder five and it's facing the right way, okay? And that's from cylinder eight back there and it's facing the correct way. Nice, clean paper towel like this. Okay, now with the three roller followers out from each head that I designated earlier, we can go ahead and turn our crankshaft to its final resting position and start taking all this stuff off of here. Now what you wanna do is put the Keyway at the six o'clock position. Well, unless you plan on getting out of the vehicle, I suggest you do something like this and mark the front of it so you know where that keyway's at when it's flipped around. And as long as you're close, once again, you're fine. It's not the end of the world. And what this is doing is getting the camshafts to their neutral position, okay? Where the remaining roller followers that are in there are not pushing valves down into the cylinders. So in case anything moves while these chains are off, nothing should hit because they're in a neutral position. They really shouldn't move the camshafts themselves. It's right there, it feels like six o'clock. 
we're good to go. All right, here we go. We're going to pull off the tensioners first, one on each side, and that'll create slack in the chain. So we can take everything else off. These are 10 millimeter bolts. And there it is, blown out tensioner, right hand side, like I said. The seals on these early ones were horrible, horrible. Let's pull this one off. Now this one actually has tension on it and it's stuck behind there, so we're gonna have to pry it out of there. If you're in here to change anything, you should be changing these tensioners out anyways. And this one you can see is not blown out. You can see that seal is intact all the way around. All right, you can start taking the guides off of there. These ones should just fall right off of here. This one's... These don't look too bad. Neither one of these. And the chains simply come off at this point. You see this? These things just are free flow at this point. So we'll go ahead, pull these chains off of here, get some slack going, and then just work them around like that. Now as far as this crank sprocket goes, it's way down in there. I'm telling you now, look at it. This timing dot on here, that needs to be facing out when we're done and we put it back on. Okay, a lot of people get these backwards on there and they have problems afterwards. Keep note of it now, I'll mention it later also. And we'll start pulling these guides out of here. Now, get that back in there. These bolts are different lengths, okay? So keep in their position for going back in, or if you're changing it out, transfer it to the new ones, because they are different lengths. And the same thing on this side, eight mil. And they're different lengths. Now at this point, all the timing components are off of here. If you're changing phasers out, now's a good time to start taking those off too. Everything's free and ready to go. What I suggest is holding it with a rag, okay, and then impacting that off of there, sliding the phaser off. Now if you don't have impact tools, what you can use is something like this from OTC, and it simply bolts onto here. And it's universal for both sides. So for this one, it would bolt up right there. And it has its little teeth that hold it so it can't move. And you flip it around like this and bolt it up. And then hold this one so you can take off the center bolt with hand tools. Now, while I do own that tool, I am not going to be using it. Because I have an impact. Like this. just keep it from spinning. Little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And it'll come off of there. Same thing on this side. Okay, now once you have that oil pump off of there, I recommend restuffing the rags down in there and cover it up and we can go ahead and start cleaning all our gasket surfaces and all that stuff. Everything on here 
so we can get ready to rebuild this thing. Now the reason why I say leave the oil pump off for now is because we're bound to get some debris in there and it's going to be very easy to wipe it out of the top part of the pan there with that pump off of there. So it makes it for a very clean job. Now the one other thing I recommend no matter what is to change these VCT solenoids out. They're like $47 um, and they're so easy to change right now. T27 screw. And guess what? It flies right out of there.